Welcome back to another heart-rending episode of You Can't Make This Shit Up. That's David Washington, your host. You know him and love him. I'm Kellen Clark, also hosting today. And today, we are talking about Texas. Usually, we talk about Florida, or usually, we talk about the federal government. But today, we're talking about Texas. But even more so than we are talking about immigration, we're talking about the Constitution today. We brought it with us. David, what are we talking about? So immigration policy has long been under the purview of the U.S. federal government, not individual states, since the U.S. Supreme Court ruled so in the landmark United States versus Arizona case in 2012. So what the fuck is Greg Abbott, Governor Greg Abbott, is doing in Texas? Let's go. Yeah. So a Supreme Court decision, one that came out uh, at the end of 2023, came out basically saying that the federal government did have the right, like uh, federal uh, border patrol did have the right to cut razor wire put up by the the Texan government if it meant that it could allow them to do their job better. Namely, they needed to cut through the wire to reach some migrants who were already in the country to arrest them. So they were actually stopping immigrants, but G Governor Abbott and a lot of the Texas politicians did not take kindly to it. So much so that he issued... He issued an order saying that this Supreme Court order is to be ignored entirely. And we can and if you could pull it up, uh, David, real quick. Sure. He he uses the term supreme law of the land, saying that Texas the Texas laws in this case are the supreme law of the land and not to the federal government, claiming that the federal government has failed um or not done its oath somehow. So we're gonna kind of break down his letter for you today, as well as talk about the the two central constitutional issues even though we often be very political we often bring in our our opinions our feelings on matters there's a lot of brass tax law that goes into this correct that i think informs a more clear decision a more clear view of what's actually happening here i agree uh immigration is a hot topic it is a topic that has uh divided americans mm -hmm. And more recently, uh, there was a massive immigration bill tied to aid to the Ukraine and to Israel that failed to pass the U.S. Senate when all but four Republicans decided to vote it down. This bill was a negotiated bipartisan effort after 40 years of this stuff. It was a bipartisan effort to get this immigration deal done, giving President Biden unprecedented abilities, responsibilities, and power to shut down the border. Yeah. And keep in mind, Donald Trump's running in 2024. This, you know, this this deal goes through. Trump could end up with that power. So always keep that in mind when giving power to the executives who comes after but very quickly that's true trump did not want to give <laughs> a democrat joe biden a win no. prior to the election of course not so either. with his influence very republicans political. buckled yeah very very political you know scoring points it's it's kind of just what you expect these days so let's actually talk a little bit about abbott's argument here yes so Abbott claims that President Biden has violated his oath to faithfully execute immigration laws enacted by Congress, namely noting uh, how many migrants still get in despite how many laws and federal agencies are presently working on it. Homeland Security, for instance. Yes. Um, he, he's claiming, and, I'm, and I've yet to find any deeper credibility on this claim, that Biden is ignoring federal statutes. That doesn't appear to be the case, but it's what he's claiming. He is also claiming that Article 4 states that the federal government shall protect each state against invasion and that under Article 1, Section 10, which I'll read to you in a moment, gives him the power to take over the border situation. So we're going to so let me read this for you. OK, I can stop dropping it. This is this is Clause 3 of Article 1, Section 10. No state shall, without the consent of Congress, lay any duty of tonnage, keep troops, or ships of war in time of peace, enter into any agreement or compact with another state, 
or with a foreign power or engage in war unless actually invaded or in such imminent danger as will not admit of delay. So let's let's first talk what actually constitutes an invasion. I'm going to pull this up on my phone here. This is from the the Texas Public Policy Foundation. They have lots of great materials and resources on how to learn more about this. I'm going to try to put in. I'm going to try remember to put it in the description. I highly recommend you check it out. Reading their summary, they 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 mentioned that framers of the Constitution, and especially the Articles of Confederation, sometimes use it in a hyperbolized sense, but a, an actual invasion, in this case, they use the term actually invaded. An actual invasion is entry plus enmity. Entry alone is trespass. Trespass is not an invasion. It requires enmity. What is What exactly does enmity entail, right? Enmity is organization and intention to violate the sovereignty of a state. And actually, they say down here they address cartels because that's a that's a place Governor Abbott goes often. And I'm going to quote them: President Day, non-state actors like cart cartel-affiliated gangs operating within the territory of a U.S. state may fall under the category of invaders, provided their criminal activity reaches a scale or degree of organization that deliberately overthrows or curtails the lawful sovereignty of the state. Now we got to go to the now. We, let's keep digging. What is what, what is sovereignty? Okay. Sovereignty is the ability to rule. In short, it's a state's independence. It's a state's ability to govern itself. So in essence, if a cartel were to actually fight the Texas government directly, if they were to fight the Texas government directly or try to establish their own law in a part of Texas, Texas could declare war on them. Sure. So that's that's his that's his first part. And then you got to ask, is this invasion that Abbott said was that he declared, which you don't declare an invasion, you have to actually be invaded. So declaration doesn't make it so. Does the current immigration standing actually warrant that label? Abbott's stance here does not. It does not justify an invasion. First of all. And to keep it simple, the federal government is responsible for the enforcement of immigration laws, the protection of its states per the Constitution. Mm -hmm. Just keeping it very simple like that. The Republicans' efforts to impeach Homeland Security Secretary Mayorkas with allegations of failure to protect our borders, failure to follow and um, execute the laws to protect our borders, failed. So this effort here, whatever Governor Abbott is trying to um, try to do, and I get it. He wants to he wants to secure the Texas border with Mexico. He has to understand the purview falls under the federal government. Former governor, um, what's his name? The Glasses. Uh, he was the Department of Energy secretary under, um, I think, Bush or maybe even Trump. Um, his name will come back to me. But uh, he was the governor of Texas. And when he was running for president, he made the same argument. Yeah. and And then... Something else I see brought up because Article One, Section Ten is where Abbott's argument lies. He mentions, or in such imminent danger as will not admit of delay, and a lot of people mention that there is a danger, a potential danger at least, at the very least, to immigrants. Whether that is, you know, cartel business, whether that is them coming in and breaking the law, anything to that degree. However, it's also important to remember the broader context that we're in. We have had a border with Mexico since the 1840s. It's a long time to have a border with Mexico. Right. And for almost the entire history of our country, barely anything was done to secure it. Mm -hmm. It didn't really start ramping up until Bill Clinton's presidency. I mean, Ronald Reagan was notoriously, for instance, very 
very relaxed on his immigration policy. And he's the one who introduced amnesty. Yeah, he he introduced amnesty. So even and and also the the number of migrants we see now, while it has been better for most of our history, it's also been a lot worse in its history too. Correct. That's an important thing to remember. So if it was such an imminent danger, we've been in imminent danger for hun- over a hundred years now. A very <laughs> long time. And again, it was uh, Governor, then Governor Rick Perry before Thank Governor you, Perry. Greg Abbott, who, while on the campaign trail when he ran for president, um, hooting hollered about, you know, the border and 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 wanting to do almost exactly the same thing as Governor Abbott. Mm-hmm. So it was found to be uh, inappropriate at that time, as Governor Abbott's efforts are found to be inappropriate this time. The responsibility falls to the federal government. Acknowledge, yes, the Constitution does acknowledge the state's sovereign interest in protecting their borders. However, it is the responsibility of the United States government, federal government, to protect and defend its borders. Yeah, and speaking of the federal government, Abbott mentions the government. The federal government does have border policy, and here's something that I'm sure he would not mention in this because it's it's another big shot in the foot. Article 6, Clause 2, the Supremacy Clause. Very, one of the most famous lines in the Constitution. It's a little obtuse, but I'll read it for you. The Constitution and the laws of the United States, which shall be made in pursuance thereof, and all treaties made, or which shall be made, under the authority of the United States, shall be the supreme law of the land. Any United States laws is the supreme law of the land. And the judges in every state shall be bound thereby. Anything in the Constitution or laws of any state to the contrary, notwithstanding. What they're saying is that according to the law, according to and judges, judges are bound to recognize federal law and not state laws if state laws conflict with federal laws. Whoa, that was weird. Federal laws. And so that and so then it's and he uses the language Abbott uses. Supreme law of the land. He's he's directly pulling up a parallel to Article Six here, and it, it's it's such a strange thing to see that you would make a parallel to Article Six, which which states that the Biden administration, what the Biden's laws will override your own. I think that's a, a an interesting choice of words, at least. But also that that then then that's another thing. If the federal law states, you know, that, that border troops can cut Texas wire, if if national law states, federal law states, you know, a certain level of looseness with the border, then and and they act and they actively take issue with the state law, then that's according to the U.S. Constitution, that's final. Say that loud enough for the. Students in the back of the classroom, Kellen. Okay. <clears throat> if you, if the federal government enacts a law and and that allows certain a level of looseness on the border and they don't, and they contest, sorry, they do contest a Texas law, that is final. The federal law takes takes over. If they don't, if they don't attempt to take issue with the Texas law, the Texas law will stand. But the moment the federal government comes in and says that they have a problem with the Texas law and that the federal laws say otherwise, flat out say otherwise, the federal government wins. It's arbitrated right there in Article 6, Clause 2 of the United States Constitution. It's right there. Good job. So this this battle on the border will continue as you have Greg Abbott steadfast in his position Mm -hmm. and federal law is federal laws and therefore the Biden administration will be steadfast in the federal government's position unfortunately we did not have any resolution recently in the bipartisan immigration bill that was uh presented and uh rejected by the senate where do we go i'm very disappointed that the bipartisan bill didn't pass i saw a lot of um it's mostly Republicans. Uh, I've seen this much less on the Democrat side. I've seen a lot of Republicans very angry with that bill, saying sure. that it wasn't going far enough. And you know, and and, all, and you know that you see some Democrats who said it went too far. That's how you know it's a good compromise. Uh, everybody's unhappy. Mm-hmm. These are just 
factors of government. And I think that shows very clearly how kind of kind of how far our standards have fallen that we and how partisan we've gotten that we cannot accept compromise amid amid even a split uh, legislature. I mean, that's I mean, if there's any time to pass like tough compromise bills, it's now. And frankly, I was just kind of hoping a, a law would get passed in Congress and the hyperbole will continue. You know, the fear mongering will continue that if we don't do something now, you know, the, the U S is going to fall. Texas is going to fall. Your family is going to be murdered. Yada, yada, and yada. You know, the end of the world is coming. Mm-hmm. We have to, we have to take military action, but we've had this for almost a hundred, almost 180 years now. Correct. About 180 years now, we've mm-hmm. had this 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 issue, and only and we and we have been doing more security than ever since the 90s. Oh, the no 90s, doubt. we picked up security. Ever since then, it's been a big part of it, and it's important to remember that context. The sovereignty of Texas will not fall unless, like, unless we were to actually be invaded by a cartel that wants to take over the government. Uh oh. But uh, but uh, <laughs> but uh, I, I but cl- so far, uh, nothing like that has uh, presented. Uh, anywhere at all so far because i think most cartels know better than to declare war on the united states right. of america <laughs> that would be a whole different conversation america at war with the cartels that would be crazy this this issue of immigration like you say we, we've been going through this for for years and years and unfortunately the personality um the cult of personality of uh, donald trump has um taken precedent over the safety of Americans, uh, safety of its residents and its citizens. And it's disappointing that, again, I'm going to harp on this, uh, and we're going to talk more about immigration. Oh, this, this is, is good. On the on the 2024 campaign trail, this is going to come up. Expect to hear it. Time and time again. And it is unfortunate that the Republicans voted this down despite all the hard work put into bringing bipartisan approval and good legislation to the Senate floor. Yeah. It's disappointing. It wasn't enough. It was too much. This is what compromise is all about. And there was a solution. But however, because there were personalities bigger than the government, bigger than the safety of Americans, bigger than the well-being of America, bigger than your kitchen table issues, this legislation did not pass. And we're no better for it. Yeah. America should be disappointed. I know. I certainly am. And remember, don't you, you don't need to buy into the hype of yeah. every policy, right? When someone's running for office, especially a high-profile office, governor, senator, president, they're going to pull out all the stops. They want it maximum showmanship. They want to. They want to make sure it feels urgent to you because. I mean, they have to explain to you why you care, mm-hmm. but it also means that they can exaggerate. It also means that they can manipulate might be a strong word, but it might be the accurate word. They might be trying to manipulate you. They might be trying to make you scared. They might be trying to make you feel like the end of the world is coming if you don't do this thing so that you feel pressured to vote for them out of fear. You feel pressured to support them right. out of fear. You don't need to buy into that. Right. Most issues are overblown. Most social issues are overblown. Most people who put transgender issues as their top issue have probably never been inconvenienced by it even a single time. Even though even though some have, it's not the majority of people. You know, it's easy to blow these issues up to buy into hyperbole, buy into mob mentality, buy into hate. Right. But yeah. congratulations to Sanders, Mitt Romney, Susan Collins, the two other Republicans the, who voted. Yeah. And and the, the gentleman right and then not to mention the gentleman from Oklahoma who brought it here in the first place. Langford. Langford, yeah, who Langford and Schu- Chuck Schumer. Yes. They came they they sat down and they actually came up with a bill. Most of the time when Republicans and Democrats meet, it goes nowhere. But it, this was a rare opportunity. Right. Um Senators uh Elizabeth Warren and uh Bernie Sanders and still kind of trying to understand your no vote. Um, but again, we're not done with this topic and no. we'll have more conversation about this. Yeah. And we'll let you know. Um, we'll make we'll make a second episode and post on our socials if a resolution to this conflict does come. 
refusal to comply with the Supreme Court has led to a wide variety of outcomes, some some of which were very mundane, like you know the government just kind of lets it go, to more uh, interesting scenarios like the Little Rock crisis, where the government can send in the military if they really want to. We don't know. If, not either of us know President Biden. We don't know if that will be a priority or not. But it's not. It's not illegal for him to do that at this point. Indeed. Technically, he can. Right. He has a the vest. We, I'm not going to read it because I've already read you enough Constitution. But the vesting clause of the Second Amendment to faithfully execute the laws, and that includes Supreme Court orders. So we'll let you know uh, as this situation develops. If it develops into something more interesting, or maybe it dies right here and the government lets it go. Right. Get yourself a pocket Constitution. We do. We carry with us always. Never leave the house without it. It's like your American Express card. Did I just do a plug for American Express? Jesus, David. Good job, David. All right. Take us home, Colin. <laughs> Remember to like, comment, subscribe, share. We want to grow our community. We want to bring conversation people. If you're making it to this end right now and you're not sharing with your with all your friends, What's wrong you, with you should. Hey, it's a little mean. Don't you're being a little mean. No, no, but no. I'll say this that, is serious stuff. Here, but that you should. Pe the people need to know. Yeah, this is serious stuff. And we bring news. We don't we don't try to buy into hyperly. We don't try to buy into, you know, the the hype of it all. We we try to analyze each uh, situation as it is and pretty much no issues off the table from from us. You know, we've we've covered everything under the sun and we will cover everything in the solar system uh, by the time we're done here. That's right. It is, so. Especially as it applies to your kitchen table issues, what yes. you are facing here in Central Florida specifically. But yeah. definitely your kitchen table issues and how all of these decisions, all of these dis of these discussions affect you and your family and your loved ones. Yeah. If, if, if we miss something about the Constitution that you think matters, let us know. Mm -hmm. Keep in mind, we covered Article 1, Section 10. The, I briefly covered the vesting clause of the Second Amendment, the Article 4, uh, I believe it's Section 4 that Greg Abbott pulls up, and Article 6, Section 2. If there's anything we missed please bring it up. We want to hear. We want more conversation. And with that, have a wonderful day. And we are out.